Rayon Design just had a massive update. And today I wanna to show you exactly how I'm implementing that into my workflow. What's going on team? My name's David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today's video sponsor, Rayon Design, has an incredible new update. I wanna share with you my exact workflow so you can use it in yours too. First things first, if you've never used Rayon Design before, all you have to do is come to rayon.design. That's all it is, no.com, just rayon.design. It'll take you to the main screen. Once you've signed up, you'll find your way to the home page, after which you can browse through hundreds of templates or start your own project. If you follow along with part one or two, you'll see that we've created this in previous examples. I've gone through exactly how we've done this in the past, but today what I wanna go through is on the top left-hand corner, our layers combinations. So there's two new elements we're gonna be talking about today. Canvases, both in model space and in paper space. So let's create one of each and I'll explain where they're gonna be best used for. So if we start with a new model canvas, press OK, we'll get an entirely new blank page. In this scenario, I'm just simply gonna call that site plan and press enter. After which I'll go back, create another model canvas, call that ground floor plan and so on. Our model canvases basically become elements of where we can document our project. That way we're not having to scroll in and out through hundreds of different drawings on the one canvas. We organize it so it's structured for our own unique cases. What I would highly recommend is starting a template, setting up all of your canvases exactly how you like, and then duplicating that every time you need to use it for any other project. Our model canvases actually house our projects. So every element in this model canvas at the top is editable. And in reality, all of this ground floor plan, I should copy and paste to my ground floor plan. There we go. Now that's on my ground floor plan, I can emphasize the importance of model canvases and paper canvases, which can only really be explained by talking about paper canvases simultaneously. So let's come across and hit the plus button once again and create a paper canvas. In this scenario, I'm gonna call it ground floor plan with a dash and then one to 100. Pressing enter, I know exactly what that paper canvas is for. Now, this is how I like to set up my workflows. You can set it up as a presentation document as an alternative. In that case, you can drag and drop your pages individually to create one long PDF of exactly what you're looking for. But for me personally, I like to keep my pages individual because I know then what I'm going to, I can work through these pages very quickly and the structure in my brain works a lot easier. So for me, having a model canvas of ground floor plan and having a paper canvas as ground floor plan just really helps to define what's what. Paper canvases are relatively self-explanatory. You'll see the paper is automatically dragged and dropped onto this nice gray background which if we want, we can change that background color here on the right hand side. I don't mind that light gray, but if you wanted a blue, if you wanted a red, if you wanted any other color, you could go ahead and simply change the canvas space color. I'll jump in the middle here to let you know that if you wanna try out Rayon Design completely for free, there is a link down in the description. All you have to do is head down there and check it out. Obviously, this is a paper canvas, so all of your line weights and line scales should be at one to one because they're gonna be printed, that's how they're gonna be visible. Our units, for me personally here in Australia, is always in millimeters, so I'm gonna keep it in millimeters. I don't need to see a grid, don't need to see a wireframe, so I'm happy with the rest of these settings. If you're thinking to yourself, but how do I know what paper canvas this is? What size is the paper canvas? By default, it imports an A4 page, and if we select the paper canvas, the settings on the right-hand panel automatically change. Up the top, the first thing I always like to do is rename my page to exactly the same as the paper canvas, so it's all consistent throughout the working project. Next, I wanna come down to my format in my page and change it to what I need it to be. In this scenario, that could be A1, A2, A3, whatever we need. Most of the projects that we do here in Australia are A1. So if we click on that, we're gonna to have to zoom out a little bit, but we'll see that is now an A1 paper canvas, fully scaled one-to-one. -one. Now here's where the model views, the canvas views, and the paper views all seamlessly blend together and we get the best user experience. If we hover over this ground floor model canvas, you'll see the square with a dashed square inside of it, which basically indicates we'd like to add it to the view. So if we press that button, it will automatically add that floor plan to our view at an absolutely gigantic scale. That's one to 68. So we'll click on that, scale it down. It will automatically scale our project perfectly to one to 100, but our view box has stayed quite large. If we hold command or alt on our system, depending on which system we're on, you'll be able to crop that view. 
So if I was to continue to do that, and I'll do this one-handed as I hold the microphone, you'll see I can crop out half the house if I didn't need it in that particular view without having to delete anything. I'll just undo that for simplicity's sake. If we drag that to the left-hand side, copy and paste it all the way onto the right-hand side, Paper Canvas is gonna become super, super important. Everything that we do to these individual views on a Paper Canvas is to the individual view. It does not affect the model canvas at all. So basically what it's allowing us to do is create an infinite number of design options. And if you're still not following along what that means, if I was to double click on this view, I could go ahead and select all of my timber flooring and change that to stone flooring. So now on the left-hand side, I have design option one with our timber flooring throughout, and I have my design option two without tiled flooring throughout. One thing to be mindful of is if we're double clicking into our actual paper view, we can pan inside the view and move our model outside of the crop lines. So if we double click, it's completely cropped, it's in the wrong spot. If you're ever having too much trouble with that, and you're sick and tired of moving it back to where it needs to be. If you'll see down the bottom, overriding view, and we'll see this little toggle of a mouse and a scroll wheel, which we can turn on and off. By default, it's turned on, which basically allows you to pan and scroll inside of your window, cropping things as you move them. I find this particularly frustrating and annoying, so I always have to come in and turn and disable that off. In my opinion, that should be set up by default and you should have to turn it on to be able to pan and move it around. Because once it's on a paper space, it should be forever locked at the right scale. Because I've panned and I've moved, that scale has gone from 100 to 106, which is just something that is gonna have so many knock-on problems in the future. So one to 100, lock it, leave it, never touch it again. Now the paper view has its own advantages, yes, but it also has its own disadvantages. So for instance, if I double click in this paper view, and select this car for instance, I can't move the car around, I can't do anything to the car in its placement, position or rotation, but I can actually change the car. So if I go and change it to a bathtub for example, you'll notice it changes on both because I've changed the model space, not the paper space. So let's undo that, bring our car back in and go to our model space of ground floor plan. If I was to simply drag and move that car away, Coming back to our paper space, you'll see it's disappeared in both examples. Despite me having tiles on this one and timber on this one, the car is completely gone. If I was to, for example, change the texture in one of my zones, so let's change it from a texture to a hatch, we have little tiles and go back to our paper space. Our original would remain as the updated, but the one we've manipulated in our paper space remains as the manipulated option. Once you finish creating your pages, your presentation documentation, your canvases and everything in between, you'll also notice that in our layer settings, we have all of our pages. Whereas if I came back to my model canvas, the original one and looked at my all pages, I would have two different pages here. If I wanted to create something similar like this presentation document in this example, where I have multiple pages and views below, all I have to do is come to my layers, hit the plus button and then press page. You'll see it automatically populates in the background. Sometimes it appears behind, sometimes on the side. We just repeat our steps, change it to A1, drag it to where we'd like to place it. Now we can place that on the right, underneath, on the left, wherever we see fit and however we wish to manipulate our workflow. The advantages of having this as a paper canvas as opposed to a model canvas is obviously the background and the manipulation of the pages. So if I come into my model canvas, you'll see the A1 page here is depicted by the dashed line. And if I select the page and move it, nothing moves with the page. I have to highlight everything on the page to move it underneath. This is absolutely fine and you can continue working with this method, but it's just a little bit more legible, a little bit easier to work with everything when it's on the paper canvas. Anyway, that is all for me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next week.